Good evening. Welcome to our fifth midweek Wednesday service. We will conclude our Wednesday services next week. And so tonight you're going to see we have just a couple of hymns selected. There's also going to be one hymn in the middle of the service that is called What Wondrous Love Is This? And you probably have sung it before. It's in our hymnal. I forget what number it is. So if you want to sing along, you can look up the to name in the back of your hymnal. Otherwise, it's going to be sung on the screen. We had a group that came three years ago, I think it was, Coin A, who's a Wells band, and they played for us, and that's their song that they have changed the tune and stuff to, and the words of the original hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? So we're going to sing along with them for that after the sermon. As I mentioned, it's the fifth Wednesday of Lent, and we'll follow the order of service, service with of evening prayer. Now, since we do not have a true accompanist that can play all the liturgy, we're not going to do all the sung responses. So we'll do the speaking of the responses tonight, as found on page 54 in Christian worship or on the following slides. We'll begin with our opening hymn, hymn 105, verses 1 through 4, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. May the Lord bless our worship. Please stand. As I mentioned before, we'll begin with the opening spoken responses. 
O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you have brought us safely to this hour of evening prayer. We thank you for providing all that we need for body and life. Bless us who have gathered in your name. Forgive our sins, speak to our hearts, dispel our sorrows with the comfort of your word, and receive our hymns of thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our living Savior, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let our prayers be acceptable in your sight. Come and help us in time of need that we may sing your praise in holy joy now and forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You may be seated. Look now at the Passion reading. We continue now in the Passion reading of Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 66, and then we'll jump into chapter 15 as well. If you want to follow along, your pew Bibles is on page 1,451. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the chief teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with, one of, with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Here ends our passion reading. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. By his wounds we are healed. We'll continue with our next three verses of hymn 105.
portion of scripture that we'd like to dig deeper in tonight is from Matthew chapter 27, beginning at the 27th verse. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand, then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Mom and dad took pride in that they had raised a happy kid. She was now 10 years old and growing up into a decent young lady. But it was during her fifth grade year that her parents noticed some differences in her. Her personality changed a bit. The youthful exuberance, the joy in her life, and the permanent smile that typically was on her face had now all given way to sullenness. During that school year, she grew increasingly distant from everybody, not just her parents. And so her parents went up and approached her. They took an interest and they asked, what's wrong? And said, it's okay to talk about it. But her behavior that changed had continued. It wasn't until the bruises started showing up on her arms and the parents noticed it that they called up a meeting with the school principal. Only after hours of prodding to break their daughter down to make her open up, finally she broke down and she started crying and admitting that she was being bullied at school by a group of mean girls. Bullying is such a widespread and real problem that even our government has created its own website for it, www.stopbullying.gov. And there on that website, it defines what bullying is. And it states that it happens in our classrooms, it happens in our homes, it happens with between spouses, it happens in the workplace, it happens wherever you go, even while you're driving on the roadway. The site describes bullying as a pattern of behavior that is used to leverage power or control over things or other people. It it identifies three types of bullying. You see them here. Verbal bullying, the first one, involves name calling and sometimes threats of violence. The second one is social bullying, and that happens when A person is deliberately excluded or ostracized from a group. And they're name called through social media or through the groups and others don't allow you to include them. And then the third one is physical bullying. And that occurs when property is damaged as a threat to someone or it gets extended from property to actually abusing the person physically. Tripping, fighting, spitting, using fists to fight. Now, if you accept the website's definition of bullying, you can see in the, in the background there, you see Jesus. If you accept that website's definition as accurate, I think we'd all agree that Jesus endured every single type of bullying throughout his life. His enemies, primarily the religious enemies, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they were usually the ones that engaged in verbal bullying with him. And we saw that last week when they took him into the illegal court and they were calling him names and then they were also coming up with false charges against him. But they also, throughout his life, before he was even put on trial, You can catch the Pharisees and the Sadducees so often trying to catch Jesus with a gotcha question. 
They think they got him stumped, and then Jesus always comes up with the perfect answer where they cannot respond anymore. But there's also, in Jesus' life, social bullying, wasn't there? Jewish leaders discouraged people from following Jesus, from listening to him, from believing in his words, so they spread rumors about him. And they even tried to embarrass him publicly. And after reading Matthew's words, which we read just moments ago, I think we can also see how Jesus was physically bullied. What happened at the Praetorium right here in Matthew chapter 27, verse 27 and following, we could definitely say that it went beyond bullying into the fact that it was contempt and even outright assault of Jesus. It's one thing for a socially awkward teenager to leverage a growth spurt to steal an underclassman's milk money or for a jealous fifth grader to bully the teacher's pet. But I think what we witness here with Jesus, it's an entirely different thing, isn't it? It's an entirely different thing to bludgeon a man nearly to death for the heinous crime of what? preaching forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he was bullied verbally and socially. But beginning that late Thursday night, Maundy Thursday we call it, or it's also known as Holy Thursday, we see that bullying go many steps further where the physical violence escalated. Tonight, we see Jesus suffer the soldiers' hands of brutality. What Matthew records for us actually is the second instance when Jesus suffered this type of beating. The brutality and the passion history. This is the second account. Jesus was now in the custody of the Roman governor. And so that has already stepped up from where earlier he was in the darkness of Friday morning with the Jewish leaders. And they had conducted their own flogging and beating of Jesus where they abused him similarly. At their illegal meeting, which we looked at last week, they tried to come up with false charges against him. They wanted sentence to Jesus to death, but all the evidence that they had everything that they tried to push on him, nothing would stick. So in their volatile zealotry, they stopped trying to pin the blame on him. And so what'd they do? They mocked him mercilessly. These church leaders, there in that basement, they blindfolded him. They slapped him across the face. They demanded that he identify himself for who he was. But they didn't stop there. They blasphemed him. They spit in his face and they sent him to Pontius Pilate. Now, let's pass him off to the Romans. And so Pilate then asks him questions. He interviews Jesus and tries to find out what's wrong with him and Pilate said, there's nothing I can find that's to charge this man. And so he was ready to set Jesus free. But he also knew how the people felt about Jesus. He was a true politician, wasn't he? He took Jesus, interviewed him, found out that there's no really way to charge him, but the people wanted him to be charged and wanted him gone. And so Pilate was a politician first and a humanitarian second. And so the angry mob of Jews that were standing outside of there after Pilate interviewed him, they were screaming that Jesus be crucified rather and release Barabbas, the one who had just committed murder when Jesus had just preached forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Perhaps if Jesus was just brutalized the Roman way, 
the Jews' blind rage, maybe then they would be placated and they'd be fine with releasing Jesus. And that's what Pilate had hoped. So that's why he allowed him to be handed over to the soldiers then, the Roman soldiers. And you know what the estimated amount of soldiers it was that Pilate handed him over to was? 600 men. He handed him over to the 600 soldiers to do their worst to Jesus. The first thing the soldiers did was they took this whip and they would whip Jesus in the back. And this whip that they had was called the flagrum. And it was designed to break open the skin, causing massive bleeding and internal injury. Many of the strands of the whip would be laced with glass or clay shards. And they would whip him and whip him. And the purpose of this flagrum whip was to weaken the individual so much so that they could continue to do whatever they wanted to do to that individual because it would weaken him so they couldn't fight back or resist any punishment. The Roman soldiers' scourging was so violent that the Jews limited the number of lashes that each criminal would receive. The Jews did. But the Romans, they had no such law. It was not restricted to a number of lashes. But a cruel piece of irony here is that this treatment, this terrible, inhumane treatment of Jesus, who's an innocent man, was so torturous that many considered it to be an act of mercy. You were so weakened by the beatings that you'd more likely die there before you're even crucified. For a Roman soldier, being stationed in Judea was like being sent to the end of the world. There was really nothing to do. And so now it's their up opportunity to get some entertainment. Because normally, just putting up with the Jews, that was a pain. It was annoying to deal with the Jews. But their constant religious infighting between the Jews, the Sadducees, and the, Fa and the Pharisees was just annoying. So to find their entertainment here and putting Jesus in the center of all of them and witnessing him suffer, entertain them for a bit. After his brutal whipping, the soldiers turned to ridicule. So they weren't done. So then they take Jesus and they put this scarlet robe around him, probably one of the soldiers' robes. And they mock and ridicule him, basing all their things on what Jesus claimed to be, right? He claimed to be the king of the Jews because that was playing to the whole Jewish crowd. This is why they wanted him crucified. This is why they wanted him dead. This is why they wanted him out of their sight. So they put that coat on him. And then they twisted together all these brambled thorns and placed it and pushed it down on his head as if it were a crown. And then they also placed a stick in his hand, his weakened hands. And they said to him, as they knelt down before him and bowed down to him, Hail, King of the Jews! The company of soldiers that were there, they took turns spitting on him and beating him over the head again and again. And with every blow of the flagrum, the whip, with every spray of spit, with every taunt and jeer, Jesus fulfilled God's word where he said, I offered up my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. There are a lot of aggressive fathers out there and more than a few mothers too who argue that the way to handle a bully 
is that when they're bullying you, to fight back. Seems kind of like the human common sense way, right? Punch the bully in the mouth. Jesus did no such thing. The same man who taught his followers to turn the other cheek, to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The same man who said to do unto others as you would have them do unto you is now the man who's under the microscope. Would he practice what he preached? He did more than that. He fulfilled scripture. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. 700 years earlier, Isaiah wrote those words. Fulfilled on that very night. Jesus let himself be brutalized. He offered up his back. He didn't object to his oppressors because he was the king of the Jews. Not that he just claimed he was. He was the king of the Gentiles. He's king of kings, and he's lord of lords. His name is above every name, and to him every knee shall bow. Why would our king, our almighty king, the king of kings and lord of lords, why would he allow himself to be so brutalized and mocked and beaten? Why doesn't he just stand up there in the midst of all that and punch them in their mouth? He did it for you. Jesus let himself be treated that way for you. And Jesus knew that this was going to happen ahead of time. That night after he had the last supper with his disciples, do you remember what he did? He took his disciples with him to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And as he's praying so hard, remember his sweat was like drops of blood and he asked the Father, please remove this cup from me if it is your will. He didn't want to have to go through with it. But he also knew what the Father's will was to go through with it. And so he did. God the Father made Jesus take and accept and experience every single last drop of that cup. It was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. Christ was brutalized for you as your perfect substitute. If Jesus hadn't endured his, this shame, if he had avoided all the indignity, if, if he had retreated from the cross and refused to drink even a drop of this suffering or a drop of this cup, then there would be no forgiveness for any of us. And God's wrath for our sins would still be on us today. And you better believe that what God, what God will do to you is much worse than any Roma, Roman soldier could carry out. So tonight, listen to Matthew's words and hear how much Christ sacrificed and went through for you. Look how thoroughly he was brutalized. That's how thoroughly you are forgiven. An ancient church father who lived in the days after the Nicene Creed was written, right after, which is right around 325 AD, John Chrysostom, I'm going to show you a picture of him in a second. John Chrysostom, he was the head of the church of Constantinople, one of the large church centers in the Middle East. And he explains why Christ's body his whole body, 
Every ounce of him had to suffer at the hands of brutality. Listen to these words. Not only one of the Lord's members, but his entire body had to suffer the most dreadful pains. His head was wounded by the crown of thorns, by the blows of the fists, and by the reed. His face endured spittle and smiting. His entire body was scourged, stripped, and arrayed in a robe of shape. His hands held the reed. Later, his tongue had to taste vinegar and gall. Because sin dwells and is active in all our members, therefore Christ desired to suffer for our sins in all his members. A bully tries to leverage power and control over you. When you're the victim of bullying, you feel alone and you feel powerless. As as though you have to obey the bully. Sin is a bully. Sin tries to coerce us into doing things against the commandments, against God's word. The devil, he's a bully. Satan browbeats us into bad behavior. Our brother Jesus, he was bullied in our place and was brutalized for all. And we belong to Christ. Now our spiritual bullies can't demand our milk money and they can't have a say in our morality. Sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. Since the forgiving love of Christ lives in our hearts, we happily submit to his gracious rule rather than to the empty threats of any evil bully. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Freedom from sin and Satan is reason enough to rejoice. But as we join Jesus in his gracious rule, we really begin to see what liberty looks like. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, Arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. As a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. Taking on Jesus' attitude enables us to turn the other cheek. It enables us to pray for our enemies and for those who persecute us. It enables us to do unto others as we wish that they would do unto us. Because Jesus made peace with us through the brutal brutal suffering in his body, in him, we are able to live peaceably with others. It's no wonder why the world is so unhappy. So many people in the world today are living without Christ. They're being bullied by sin and Satan. They feel alone and powerless as the bullies dictate their lives. How much better it is to have God as your father. He raises happy kids. Our brother Jesus suffered under the soldier's hands of brutality, and as a result, we will never have to suffer God's wrath. Jesus did. And as happy kids in God's family, we delight to bring our brother's peace to people who are still being bullied today. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all our understanding, will guard our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen. We'll remain standing as we join in our next hymn. As I mentioned before, Koine has sang sang this hymn before for us. And so we'll join in in the video. What a wonder.
wondrous love is this, O my soul, O my soul. What a wondrous love is this, O my soul. What a wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. Dreadful curse for my soul When I was sinking down Sinking down Sinking down When I was sinking down Sinking down When I was sinking down, I was sinking down Beneath God's righteous I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on And when from death I'm free, I'll sing His love for me And through eternity I'll sing on, I'll sing on And through eternity Normally I ask for prayer requests. If you do have a prayer request, you may, you may send it in. You're going to have just a short time tonight to do that. You can text it to my number, 806-773-0516. Make sure you mark it as public or private. Then also you may send in your offerings digitally through Venmo, or you may mail them there. You have just a, a few seconds to be able to send that in, and then we'll join in the prayer. Please stand for prayer. We'll join in the spoken responses. In the closing hours of this day, hear us as we pray, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the well-being of people everywhere, for the growth of your church in all the world, and for the strengthening of all who serve and worship here, we pray, O Lord. Christ, have mercy. For one another, young and old, for blessings that come with every stage of life, and for joy in doing your will, we pray, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our public servants who work day and night to bring protection, justice, learning, and health to this and every place, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather and bountiful harvests, for clothing and food, for health of body, mind, and spirit, 
and for deliverance from all sin and every form of evil, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful who have gone before us, who have shared with us your good news, whose souls are now at rest in your heavenly kingdom, we give you thanks, O Lord. Thanks be to God. In thanksgiving for your many and varied gifts to us, we now commend ourselves to your care. Be our shield and strength, O Lord. Amen. We now join in the prayer that you yourself have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in the in peace. In peace, Lord, you let your servants now depart according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for every people a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. In 123, Lord Jesus Christ, you set us free.
Again, good evening. Good evening to all of you who joined us online too. Thank you so much for joining us for our fifth Wednesday night service. There's a few announcements that I have. This coming Saturday is our church work day, so hopefully you can join us for that work day. It's going to start at 9 o'clock and be here. We'll probably be here till noon. I like to put an ending time just so you know it's not the whole day. Um, you don't have to come for that whole time either. So if you would like to be a part of it, we'd love to have you just come and help us get some of the projects done. I've got a list that's in the fellowship hall. I think it's 14 bullet points long and they're all pretty big items. So hopefully you can join us and help us accomplish that list for the following event so that our grounds look nice for our Easter for Kids event, which is the following Saturday from 11 till 12. We still need some volunteers. So if you would like to volunteer for this, it's not a huge commitment. It would just be basically get here about 10:30 ish and we'll talk you through what you need to do you're basically handing things out to people that drive up and you're just bringing joy to their life during this time so hopefully you can be a part of that if you are interested please contact me chris larson or stephanie cares and um, we'd like to get you involved with that as well we need to know soon so that we can organize the lines and how many lines we will be able to do sunday we'll continue our study on the case for easter this will be our third of the four lessons of the case for Easter, and it's been going really well, so hopefully you can join us here in person or online. And then next week is our final Lenten Simple Supper. It's going to be a picnic theme. Yeah, pretty general picnic theme. Hopefully you can join us for that and sign up either out there in the entryway or on the website through the QR code. Those are all the announcements that I have. May the Lord bless your day and the rest of your week.